Like I grew up in Pittsburgh and I would often go to the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh and they have a, like a good natural history department. And they've got a gem department. And so seeing objects in museums was um, more of what I was exposed to than like art museums, even though they've got you know, a good art wing of the Carnegie Museum. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until I went to university actually that I started going to museums and galleries. Part of my practice where I go into museums and I, I offer um, to document the, the collection. So usually I'm interested in birds, like I'll, I'll photograph other things as well, but usually it's the birds, so I'll um, yeah, then use them in my own practice. Birds, I think, are interesting because they're the most obviously migratory and they reflect the human condition on that level. I think there's something relatable and to that, you know, to the human kind of drive to explore the world. I also, you know, coming to New Zealand, um, birds, I think, here have a strong presence in the culture. And as an outsider, you know, coming to New Zealand, looking at some of the artists that were here, like um, Bill Hammond, and there's some um, history between, you know, of artists making works based on birds of some degree, or and so that influenced me. And and it was also an area that very clearly has um, bird. Uh, extinctions, you know, with the moa and um, huia, the South Island kakako and bush wren, a variety of these, and plenty of others. But you know that you can go to a museum and actually see and 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 hold um, a huia. That there's something interesting, ment you know, uh, mentally or in intellectually strange about the paradox of holding something that doesn't exist. Um, and I like that idea. I probably would say that I boil my my own practice, my own thoughts about my practice down to drawing. I think that there's drawing as a strong element to all of my work. Printmaking is so uh, facility or um, equipment heavy. Um, you need the chemistry, you need the presses, you need you know the stones and all the inking rollers and there's just a, a lot of setup and so there wasn't any place in Auckland that I could do lithos once I graduated. Um, so I spent a couple of years doing drawings and which was good for me because it was good to kind of focus on just doing drawings and focus some on my photography. And, um, but then once I got the press, um, I was able to then continue my printmaking practice and, um, and set up a studio, which was fun. Yeah. Lithography is um, the way that it breaks, the name breaks down to stone writing, stone imaging, and it can be done on other materials like metal or um, paper or even. Um, but essentially it is um, the practice of drawing on slabs of limestone um, with a greasy material. And that grease um, attracts ink. And the reason why it attracts ink is because uh, you sponge the stone down with water all the non-drawn areas hold a very thin film of water and your greasy drawing repels the water. And then you roll the stone up with oil-based ink and the ink will go down onto those greasy, greasy lines. And then you put your paper down on the, on the stone and run it through the, the press and the pressure transfers the ink from the stone to the, to the paper. And, um, and then if you want to do another layer, uh, another color, for example, um, I often will use the same stone, so I, I'll grain the stone down to get to a fresh, clean, non-greasy layer. You remove all of that, and then you um, then you transfer a chalk outline of where you want your next layer to be drawn, and then you draw your second layer, and then you print that in a different color, for example. Um, I did a series of monotypes um, of bats and moths, and, um, and they're inkblot monotypes that I then manipulate and then the and then when I hang them, they are very much like um, in like kind of like a flock. But I, I can I think of them more almost as like an evolutionary chain. And um, and then there's gaps in the evolution. And so I have a series of monotypes. So each one is very unique because I have to work with it um, fresh with new fresh ink. But there are still residual ink from the previous one. And so 
Um, compositionally, they have like a family or a language that continues throughout them. So the studio that I've built up um, does serve um, like two sides of my practice. One is my own uh, interest in my own fine art, and then I um, have a collaborative practice where I invite other artists into the studio um, and facilitate their uh, printmaking. I think my art education, you know, is always growing. Um, because I'm collaborating with other, you know, good artists. So that's quite fun. <laughs>